Good afternoon. I'm speaking today via video since, uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm away on a state visit uh, the day you have your conference. But I did want to speak about uh, e-health. Demography is one of the uh, few areas in social science where we can predict the future. And in this regard, <coughs> demography in Europe does not look good. Europe is aging, which means <coughs> we will have fewer, fewer people working to keep those of us who are pensioners getting pensions. Today, also, health care costs in Europe are rising. Uh, health care systems have not evolved to respond to the modern environment and really don't work as well as they should. We know that compared to all of the other areas where information technology has made huge advances in the past uh, quarter century, healthcare remains at least 10 years behind the level of technological development compared to at least other areas. So the question is, how do we ensure that European healthcare in the future will be affordable? Uh, how do we do this in a Europe with greater mobility? How do we guarantee health care will be of high quality everywhere in Europe? To find answers to this question, uh, about three years ago, the European Commission uh, asked me to head a task force uh, to come up with answers for this, and we worked on this for almost two years. And we came up with a number of proposals. The first uh, and most important uh, proposal we see in this new digital age is uh, we make everyone the owner of their healthcare data. This is rarely implemented in, uh, in Europe, uh, but what it means is that you own your own data, not the hospital, not the doctor, not the state, but you own your own data and decide what to do with it which will represent a uh, major change in the relationship between the doctor and the patient uh, that has evolved ever since Hippocrates. Um, and it will lead to a more collaborative partnership, one would hope, between doctors and patients. Secondly, uh, we said we need to actually liberate the data and make it available for research. Uh, this means that uh, in order to do medical research, uh, scientists can have access to data uh, from patients, but of course this requires that we have very strong anonymization procedures to guarantee that you never tie any, any medical records to any particular person. But this again would allow European uh, medical science to do far more than it can at present. If we do these things, uh, we, I think, can revolutionize uh, the quality of health care in the European Union. Of course, this is not an easy task, and it touches upon all kinds of sensitivities. I nonetheless believe that we need to move ahead in this, in this direction, and that this would allow us to offer far better services in the medical area, especially uh, by using new forms of uh, IT information technology. Certainly one of the core tasks that we face with this, uh, especially in light of various revelations about, uh, about uh, spying on data, accessing data banks, is that we need to build trust. In Estonia, we have, uh, we have actually done a fair bit in this direction, more than most, because we have, uh, we have come to the conclusion that the real essential element of, um, of having trust in any kind of data, but especially in healthcare, is having, an, having a secure online identity uh, so that you really know who you're talking to and with whom you are sharing your data. Uh, the fundamental problem in IT overall in this modern age, I think, is summarized in a cartoon from 1996 in The New Yorker, which has two dogs in front of a computer screen, and one dog says to the other, on the Internet, no one knows you're a dog. Well, on the Internet, we really don't know 
who anyone is until, unless we have a secure online identity, which is, as I said, lies, uh, lies at the core of the Estonian healthcare system. In fact, it is at the core of our entire um, E-Estonia system. Uh, and I'm sure you will hear more about this uh, in today's talks. Secondly, in, in order for this to work, you need a data exchange platform with concrete standards which allow you to securely, and based on a secure online identity, exchange data, put them into data banks, uh, and make them available for use for medical research. Um, we need to break down the silos that exist between various institutions, between hospitals, between ministries, between uh, various organizations, so that we can, in fact, share these data. Here in Estonia, we have a countrywide data exchange system, which we call the X-Road, which uh, works rather successfully. And in particular, if talking, uh, when talking about uh, e-health, then 97% of Estonians uh, use our digital prescription system that allows uh, a person to go to any pharmacy in the country and uh, get the uh, and have the prescription that his or her doctor has written for him or her to uh, take that prescription out. Um, uh, it is our hope that uh, we can continue using this uh, common platform and secure identity to uh, develop similar or exact extend this service to to other countries. So that say, if we have a have a uh, an agreement with Finland, with uh, whom we already have an agreement to have a common data exchange layer, but if we move on to, say, prescriptions, that would mean a, a Finn could come to Estonia, and if uh, he or she loses, uh, say, antibiotics, can go to the Estonian, uh, an Est any Estonian pharmacy, and with, uh, with the ID, take out a new prescription. Uh, at the same time, we do have to uh, spend uh, or pay a considerable amount of attention to uh, data protection technologies. Uh, here in Estonia, we have one which has now, in fact, been approved by the, uh, by, uh, the Estonian Data Protection uh, Inspectorate that allows the uh, uh, exchange of data in a way that uh, it is never tied to a particular person. So that means that uh, uh, the, uh, the data remains private, but at the same time, the, the data can be used for, uh, for medical research. Uh, in this case, we have an Estonian company called ShareMind that has developed these technologies. Uh, analogous technologies, I assume, will be developed in other countries as well. We in Estonia and our system has been, uh, <coughs> has been thoroughly analyzed uh, by the OECD, uh, which ranks uh, among the, uh, the rich man's club known as the OECD as the best e-health system in Europe. For us, that's not good enough. We, uh, we have uh, found uh, quite a few uh, shortcomings in this uh, in the system, which is another aspect we need to keep in mind, that it is not a, not a one single step that we, that we simply take to digitize data, but in fact uh, to have effective services really takes a considerable amount of work to develop and to apply, and even when the technology exists, either the legislation is um, not quite there, or there is a certain unwillingness by some people to use the system. In any case, it is a long process, but uh, I am firmly convinced we need to proceed in this direction if we are to uh, obtain the full benefits of, of an e-health system. Um, so here again, where one obvious uh, shortcoming we found is the uh, digital registration system that would or should uh, significantly simplify the procedures uh, that patients go through in order to get a doctor's appointment. Um, again, there is um, in some cases opposition, in some cases simply uh, 
lack of interest. On the other hand, when we think of the potential benefits of uh, being able to uh, uh, efficiently obtain a, a doctor's appointment uh, countrywide based on the digital on a digital system, we see that we actually can help the patient far more than using traditional methods of calling up and trying to get an appointment. I think that um, this is the way we will be going in the future, and these are the these are the trends. Uh, given that in uh, that things do work in Estonia, and given that we also know where the shortcomings will come, and we can predict pretty much that uh, that in other countries that uh, adopt similar systems, that they will face the same kind of problems, be it legislative or or opposition or simply just not wanting to do anything something differently. Uh, that um, it's worthwhile studying the system that we have here. Um, but the medical profession and the entire medical system will change as a result of uh, e-health. When the patient has the right to show, the right to own his or her own data and show it to any doctor that the patient wants to show it to, we will bring an element of competition into healthcare that has been missing ever since, uh, the, as I said in the beginning, Hippocrates. The doctor will be less of a priest and more of a service provider. Uh, and that relationship, uh, which we've seen ever since Hippocrates, will change to a degree that is very difficult to predict what the future will hold. When a patient owns his or her own data, uh, they can uh, do other things as well, such so as keep a lifelong uh, personal health record, which would uh, be of immense importance for patients' um, health, especially as they get older. To come back to the original push for why uh, we did the European, why the European Commission uh, uh, did this task force. When we look at how Europe is aging and when we look at the, uh, the general demographic picture, we must come up with solutions now because the problems uh, that we will hit in 10, 15, 20 years are all predictable at this point. We know these problems will hit us. We will have many more older people. Uh, our task uh, in government and in the medical professions is to ensure that, um, that with this coming change in the demography of Europe that we are prepared to meet the increased health demands and we make sure that the costs will not overwhelm us or those who in the future will be paying for them. Um, and for uh, those of you who have not been in Estonia before or heard the language, I'll end by saying Soovin teille sisukkat päeva Eesti e-tervise tuleviku üle arutamisele. Ma tänan teid. Thank you very much.